Good Saturday evening, everybody, on Periscope and Twitter. Welcome to the early evening edition of News Channel 3's exclusive video weather blog, Weather Overtime. Glad to have you along for the ride. We just finished up a wrap on what's going on on our main Facebook page for WREG.com uh, there, and we are now on air with our Periscope broadcast for tonight. Glad to have you along for the ride, and if you have any questions about what's going on, if you've never been here before, again, this is our exclusive video weather blog where we try to kind of bring things to you in a video magazine format for lack of a better term so if you'd like to know more about what's happening just stick around we'll be talking more about the weather throughout the mid-south again that's east arkansas north mississippi and back into west tennessee so if you'd like to find out more about what's going on in and around the area here stay tuned we'll have more details as to uh, what's going on here in just a little bit got a lot to talk about again it's fairly quiet tonight but we do see again that potential for uh, some more rainfall heading our direction into the course of the rest of of the late part of the weekend and into and around areas again toward tomorrow and into Monday. That's where we see the best possibility of more rainfall, maybe some thunderstorms heading our direction. We'll talk a little bit more about that coming up here in just a little bit. Drop, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, drop your location and your weather reports if you have them into the comments section. We'd love to know more about where you're from and what the weather's like there. Don't care if it's in the mid south or not, but just let us know more about your location, where you're checking in from. I'm kind of doing everything here myself periscope and twitter on my computer and right up there on my uh, phone we've got our facebook live so we're doing sort of a triple netcast for tonight don't have anything on the way of a router system that can do all this at once but uh, nice to have everybody along for the ride if you're on periscope and twitter again the blue bar at the bottom of your screen that's where the forecast is scrolling on by and you can find more details again about the seven to ten day forecast available at wreg.com slash weather if you'd like to get a little bit more information there there. Let's go ahead and get started. Welcoming all of our viewers in on Facebook for this evening. Uh, Bridget Cruzen, hope I'm saying that right, from Bolivar. Welcome to the show for this evening, and thanks everybody for dropping on by. Into the next few days, again, not bad for Sunday. We do see that potential for, again, the possibility of maybe some more rainfall into late tomorrow evening, but again, that's why we marked that down as evening potential of rainfall. Showers, maybe some thunderstorms coming up as we go into and around the area of Monday. Monday, and then by Tuesday, the rainfall begins to clear on out of the picture, and that gives us at least a little bit more time to ring back out again before the next chance of rainfall starts to make its way on through. April Gardner from Henderson, uh, welcome to the show. Robert Huey, do we need to get the ARC ready for Monday? I'm waiting to see if Lowe's and Home Depot have a sale on gopher wood, but uh, we'll see what happens there coming up relatively soon. Fairly mild conditions in the Mid-South, yes, I've, I've heard all the ARC jokes before, so uh, just going along with the flow for right there. There. As of right now, again, very mild conditions, a little cooler toward midweek. We'll talk about that coming up here in just a little bit. No major problems out there with visibility. Live view of I-240 and Poplar tonight. All the traffic moving along in all different directions just fine at this point. So no visibility problems, mainly clear skies overhead. So not seeing, again, a lot of major concerns out there for right now. View live from our transmitter tower camera atop our transmitter tower around I-40 and Witten Road, which are looking at the intersection right there, Walmart, back towards Sycamore View, and around the area of the Loop, back into East Memphis. Again, good visibility showing up for tonight. Likewise, live view from I-55 and Goodman Road in South Haven. No problems showing up here. Good visibility, clear skies, very nice view of Venus and Mercury sinking below the horizon earlier tonight. Hopefully you had a chance to see that uh, earlier this evening. We have a little bit more moisture in several thousand feet up. It's nothing really much more than that. This, we've cranked up the sensitivity on Storm Tracker 3S radar, and you'll notice a couple of blobs showing up. Again, we're seeing a little bit of moisture stacking up several thousand feet above us, but we are not getting anything in the way of either cloud cover or approaching rainfall for the area, so we don't have much of anything really to talk about at this point where it comes to rainfall out there. Janice Moon from Covington, uh, thanks a lot for joining us on Facebook for tonight, and everybody else who's starting to check in on Periscope for this evening. Thanks a lot for uh, dropping on by the show. Now we are watching again a new storm system. It's right on the west coast state sending waves of energy and moisture across the inner mountain west and this is going to be the next storm system that's going to be affecting us way on back toward the mid-south area. But for right now it's mainly confined to back to the west of us. Temperatures in the mid-south on WeatherNet 3, great to be a gator. Welcome
welcome to the show on Periscope. And for the rest of the evening, temperatures will again be slowly dropping off as the sunshine goes away and the temperatures begin to fall with that dry very clear air across much of the area. Humidity values in the Mid-South today, 20 and 30 percent. That's bone dry, very comfortable air, the type of air we wish we could have in the Mid-South around June, July, August, and September, even into early October. That's very comfortable. Not going to be that way as we go into the next several days, unfortunately, as we get more chances of rain. Uh, see here, Clem Sports Ky or Kiem Sports, Kiem Kiem Sports one on Periscope. Thanks a lot for joining us at this point in time. Scott Bondi Bonzio in Cordova, thank you very much. Rhonda Ferguson grilling hamburgers tomorrow afternoon for some of our kids. When does the rain start? We'll talk about that. <coughs> Excuse me, coming up in just a little bit. In the meantime, things are looking again decently dry for overnight. Let me reposition the microphone for all of our Facebook viewers. Make certain you hear me okay on that. Rest of the evening through News Channel 3 at 10, chilly temperatures falling into the 40s. News Channel 3 daybreak tomorrow starting at 6 a.m. We'll be back to around the mid to upper 30s to lower 40s and then rising pretty well. We should actually see some sunrise tomorrow, but then into tomorrow afternoon, clouds start to make their way on through about mid-afternoon. Very mild temperatures, just above normal mid to upper 60s, so looking very quiet out there as we get into the early evening hours. Now, there will be chances of rain overspreading the Mid-South as we go toward very early Monday morning. Here's part of the problem with this. Again, the leading edge of this, we may get some showers pre-10 o'clock news tomorrow night, but this is going to be moving into very dry air. So you may have rain several thousand feet up, and as that rain heads on down toward the surface, the air at the surface remains very dry. It's going to take a lot more moisture to move in and to allow that moisture to let the rain make its way all the way down to the ground. So a lot of this very early is probably not going to be anything for us in the way of very heavy rain. Matter of fact, a lot of it may actually be torn apart by the atmosphere and evaporate before it heads on down. But as we get into Monday morning about commute time, it's a good possibility Corey Ventura will have some extra crashes to talk about because, again, we rarely go a rainy day in the Mid-South without one accident at least. So please use caution, a little bit of extra time, a lot of extra space between you and the vehicles in front of you, blah, blah, blah. We've said all of it before. It really does make a difference. So slow it down and give yourself extra time to get to where you're going on Monday morning and Monday evening because the showers will be sticking around right on in through the time to pick the kids up from school. So that will, again, be something that you need to keep an eye on for speed and distance and everything else. So safety first, safety always. You get the general idea. So just please be careful out there as we go throughout the rest of Monday. Getting rid of the rain showers by Tuesday. Again, beautiful end of the weekend. Chances for showers out there, again, mainly in the late afternoon and evening hours. So uh, Rhonda Ferguson, it's looking like it's going to be mainly around dinner time and afterwards that we get the showers in here. I'm going to go ahead and throw a couple of chances of thunderstorms in the mix as we go toward Monday. Uh, the forecast is kind of bobbled back and forth between the idea of thunderstorms and no thunderstorms, but I'm just going to go ahead and throw a couple in here because I think it's going to be warm enough and unstable enough with this storm system to maybe get a few thunderstorms going. The Storm Prediction Center does not have anything in the way of severe weather, and that's always good news to report on. So, so far, it doesn't look too huge, but we do see, again, the possibility of some of those thunderstorms lingering into very early Tuesday morning, then clearing skies as the storm system off the west coast makes its way on through. The storm system is rotating through the atmosphere counterclockwise. So as that goes away from us, the winds on the backside of that system rotating on through will be making its way in with drier, cooler air as we go into Tuesday. So we'll get rid of the clouds first. And then as we go into the middle part of the week, we see some much cooler numbers coming on through. Not Arctic blast, just a little bit below normal, but noticeably cooler out across much of the Mid-South. So that, again, could be a bit of a problem out there waiting at the school bus stop, especially for the kids, Thursday morning and Friday morning could be some temperatures near frosty levels out there. So if you have any plants that you want to protect, that's going to be something to take care of and make certain that, again, the kids are all planned out to get, again, where they need to be. Uh, to, again, make certain that they are bundled up properly before they uh, go anyplace out there waiting for the school bus. Now, another chance of rainfall waiting in the wings Saturday and Sunday. This rainfall was originally slated for late Thursday, most of Friday. 
pushed it back a little bit into the forecast, so we do not see too much of anything else uh, going on here in the way of the potential of rainfall during the rest of the week. But next weekend, that could be a problem. And yes, there is also going to be that potential of stronger weather. We can't ignore that. It doesn't look like it's on the maps for right now, but at this time of the year, we have to kind of assume that that is at least a potential problem. So that is going to be something we really need to pay attention to at this time of the year. And we'll show you one more reason why coming up here uh, right now. I thought I had this later, but here's the deal. Uh, if you'd like to be a Skywarn spotter, the National Weather Service can use your help. All you do is show up, take the course, and again, you'll be able to get a little bit more information about uh, what's going on at this point in time out there when it comes to severe weather. My wife tuning in from Winter Jam, uh, hopefully on Skillet, uh, watching Skillet tonight from Winter Jam, and violinist Jonathan Chu uh, making his uh, debut into and around that area at this point in time. Uh, miss you here as well, so thank you very much uh, for checking in. Say hello to uh, my daughter who's with uh, Melissa tonight, my wife, who's just checking in for tonight as well, and hope Winter Jam is going along nicely out there. Severe weather purposes, if you, again, would like to take the course, all you have to do is, again, drop by these meetings wherever they are scheduled. They are totally free. They All you have to do is just show up and take the course. They're about an hour long, hour and a half, depending on how many questions get asked. So, again, your opportunity to ask some questions and to uh, find out more into and around the Mid-South area. Robert Huey, will we need ice skates for Wednesday night? You're going to have to use very tiny ice skates because I don't think we're going to have too much of anything in the way of major amounts of frost out there, nor are we looking at anything that's going to freeze the rivers and lakes out there. Good question, but it doesn't appear to be necessary at this point, so you may have to go find an ice rink at this point to see what goes on there. Show up, take the course, learn what needs to be done for storm spotting in the Mid-South. Spotter courses not chase courses. If you want to learn how to chase storms, you're going to have to get trained by experts. And again, Austin's rule of storm chasing, number one, you do not chase storms unless you have been trained by experts. Period. End of sentence. No arguing with that. Chasing storms as an amateur is a very, again, not smart thing to do. So please consider that before you decide to go out after any old storm. You could wind up in a lot of trouble. You could wind up causing a lot of trouble for people who get stuck behind you. Something, again, to consider. Safety first, safety always, and here's where you learn to stay safe first. This information can tell you what to look for, so you can call that information into the National Weather Service in Memphis, and they can let everybody else, people in the media especially, know what's going on, so we can tell everybody else what's going on around the Mid-South. More information, you can check it out at WREG.com. Scroll down beneath the forecast, and we'll give you more details about that there. Weather where the troops are, thank you, my wife, for thinking this one up. I totally did not think about this, but our own naval support activity in Millington, Tennessee, temperatures back in the lower 50s with, again, some clear skies out there. We do these forecasts for anybody who has friends or loved ones in the military. We just did do a few of them. We can't do everybody's outposts out there, but we would like to. But, again, it's sort of a nice little thank you to everybody out there who's wearing the uniform, and thank you very much for supporting your country that way. Guantanamo Bay in Cuba, temperatures back into the mid to upper 70s with a high temperature pushing 90 degrees today. Iraq temperatures back in the 50s, just about sunrise time, but partly cloudy up and down the country for right now, 50s and 60s there. Heading back toward Afghanistan, snow showers early this week, sunshine right after sunrise, 30s around Faizabad, Kabul at 37, Kandahar 43, and one degree warmer with mostly cloudy skies back around Herat at about 44 degrees. Persian Gulf temperatures in the 50s and 60s. So again, doing pretty nicely out there uh, into and around the Straits of Hormuz and much of the Persian Gulf uh, area stations checking in with some very mild conditions out there. This is the time of the year that we can get some pretty good uh, sandstorms, dust storms kicking up into parts of the Arabian Peninsula and back into parts of Southwest Asia, but doesn't appear to be the case right now, so that's good news. Korean Peninsula was socked in by some very cold weather right down from eastern Siberia right about the time of the Olympics a couple of weeks ago. Now not the case, and things are looking very good as we go towards lunchtime on Sunday morning morning. The temperatures back in the 50s and 60s, very calm, very pleasant, and more cloud cover than anything else around the southern part of the Korean Peninsula. If you'd like to get this information, it's very easy to do. All you have to do is go to the World Meteorological Organization, and you can find out more details about forecasts, climate data, climate information centers, the international forecast information from various locations out there. So a great opportunity that you will be able to see uh, that information out there. So check it out at public 
www.wmo.int. And again, you can find out a little bit more uh, into and around the area. So this is something we could see a little bit more about much of the area. Robert Huey dropping the computer tablet. Talk about falling temperatures. Thank you, Rimshot, uh, for Mr. Huey. Thank you very much uh, for that one out there. Rest of the day today, again, some beautiful pictures out there, starting off with Kenneth Sims, a beautiful view from Dyer County at sunrise this morning. Uh, up and around Gibson County, so thank you very much uh, for that view on Facebook. Also a beautiful view of sunset last night in Memphis from the Raymond James building in downtown Memphis, looking at a beautiful view of sunset out there, so a nice look out and across the area. Staples Weather One, thanks for joining us on Periscope for tonight. From some of our Twitter accounts out there, Louis Haskett from Friday, Great view from northeast Arkansas. Plenty of sunshine setting up there. A uh, little bit of some interesting uh, questions being raised about this. Brand new Highway 51 around Coldwater, and it's already underwater, and we don't really even have that much in the way of major flooding going on in the Mid-South area. This from Music Man Jim at around Highway 51 and Mississippi Highway 306. Uh, Going to be interesting to see what happens there. Looks like traffic is getting through at this point, but again, I would exercise a lot of caution in and around situations like this. And remember, if there's a flood barrier up, it's there for a reason. Do not drive around those things. They're there to keep you from being swept off the roadway and drowned someplace. So remember, turn around. Don't drown. Yes, it's inconvenient. Yes, it's going to take you a lot more time to get where you're going, but and as we do on the infomercials, but wait, there's more. Yes, you will arrive alive. It's an amazing thing. So turn around, don't drown, find another way to get to where you're going. And finally, a nice view from sunrise this morning, Fred Style 88 from the campus of the University of Mississippi in Oxford down at Ole Miss. If you've got pictures, we'd love to see them on my Facebook page. On Send them to me, tweet them to me at aonic underscore wreg3. Aonic, no underscore necessary, WREG3 on Instagram, and I'm also all over social media, so you can find me out there someplace. Can't stop to check the forecast with your phone or on the computer because you're on the go. Dial us up on the radio, Country 92.5 and Oldies 102.3. My entire forecast available in tune and around the area on social media, also on radio. And, of course, I'll be back on with Bob and Josh on Talk Back Live on AM 730. That'll be coming up bright and early Monday morning at about 8 o'clock. And don't forget about to check out our forecast online. It's available at wreg.com slash weather. I'll be back on with News Channel 3 at 10 with your complete updated forecast into the rest of the weekend. Kristen Holloway will have all the day's news. Mike Sadie's got all the sports wrap for you coming up in just a bit. And, of course, we'll have everything as well on News Channel 3 Daybreak very early tomorrow morning. Thanks to everybody for joining me on tonight's edition of Weather Overtime. More information again with News Channel 3 throughout the rest of the weekend on air and online. I'm meteorologist Austin Onick from downtown Memphis in the News Channel 3 Severe Weather Center. Thanks a lot for joining us for Weather Overtime. We'll have more coming up a little bit later on tonight on News Channel 3 at 10. Thanks for joining us.